Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Intersection, watching Sacktop vs. Anarchid. I am Shadow Fury 33 your commentator, and let us begin. So, Intersection is a, as you can see, very flat map. There's no real hills, there's, there's a couple little ridge sections here, sort of, but basically no hills. Everything's just ramps and flat ground. Therefore, very conducive to vehicle play. As we can see, Anarchid very clearly going for Light Vehicle Factory and Shield Bots from Saktoth. Interesting. Now, historically, or at least there was a period where Shield Bots were considered to be uncounterable by Light Vehicles on account of Light Vehicles basically being focused on being a bit more at range and Shields blocking off all the damage. I don't know if that's still valid. I don't think it is. I never personally agreed with it that much myself. Really, just moving units under the Shields. It, does it, it does wonders, and I'm sure Sackdoth and An I'm sure Anakin's well aware of this, so I doubt it's going to be a lopsided match. It should be a very even match. Sackdoth very quickly getting his economy going. As actually, Anakin isn't. Anakin very quickly getting radar, but pushing forward. He's he's got beam laser energy cell, but he is a little bit behind on economy. He is focused very much on forward economy, using a constructor to build up his economy in his main platform, while Sackdoth using his con commander entirely for constructing that economy and not morphing in the process. So Sackdoth is a bit ahead right now, and he's going to be slightly ahead overall for keeping that up. Though Anarchid does have a slight advantage in energy, the one difference being that Sackdoth's energy can overdrive his metal extractors. Not a big deal yet, but it could be used for a grid later on. We saw the last game that really helped out for Kane. And Bandit coming up for Sackdoth, very cleverly going around the back where he expects defenses won't be and where there aren't. Anarchid, on the other hand, not going for harassment of his own. He does have a Scorcher set up. Probably using it entirely for defense. Trying to get rid of this bandit, but really it won't matter too much. The one advantage to the way Anarchid has set up his base is that Sackdoth can't just harass it the way he's planning on doing. On the other hand, Anarchid could do exactly the thing Sackdoth had planned to do. There's really not a whole lot that Sackdoth has to defend these back metal extractors. The only thing he has going for him is that the Scorcher is going to have a harder time getting in. It's going to be slower up the ramp and then the laser turret's going to hit it as less room to go around the laser turret. And at this point, Sackdoth has his units built up. Like I said, he has a minor economic advantage, meaning he can get his units up that much faster. Because, of course, your economy is directly related. Your metal income, primarily, your energy and metal income together, but energy is usually higher than metal. Your metal income is directly related to your unit production rate. Because all factories build at 10 metal per second, well, 10 metal and energy per second, if they can. If you have less than 10 metal or energy per second going into that factory, that is, if your metal and energy income split such that you don't have enough going to that factory, it will not build at full speed. And if you add metal and energy to it, using a constructor or a caretaker, it will increase the build speed. Decrease the build time. Very effective way of getting a lot of units from one factory. That's the big reason why 0k is focused around single instances of each factory type rather than multiple instances of factory types like you see in a lot of other RTS games. A lot of other, TA, a lot of other Total Annihilation based games in particular, actually. Anyhow, Sackdoth is switching over very quickly to Thugs. Three minute mark going for Thugs. He is very confident that he's going to be able to pull us off. I mean, Thugs are definitely good units. It's just that they... Actually, you know what? Against vehicles, that's a good idea. The way that the, the Scorchers will automatically micromanage, the Thugs... The shield size works well, but even then... It is focused heavily on the shields. That's, that's still a big thing. However, it looks like Sackdoth has it working. Oh, there's Anarchy actually moving in. He's trying to move under the shield. The Thug able to get away quickly enough that it doesn't matter. The thing with Scorchers is that they have to be close to their target in order to deal maximum damage. And not only that, if they're close to the target, obviously it's under the shields with Thug. But farther away from the target where they'll tend to go automatically, they're farther away. The Sackdoss Commander able to get rid of the Scorchers just in time, protected by the Thug shield, and just barely survived with a tenth of its health. Anarchist Commander, on the other hand, is perfectly safe, going towards the northeast side of the map to continue to expand, take the map control that way. Losing those Scorchers, however, is quite big, especially near a commander. Sackdoth can immediately reclaim these, and he doesn't have any constructors building up his factories around. He still... He has enough metal output from just construction that he doesn't think it's worthwhile. Oh! Dominator's coming in! Getting a laser turret, which will take out... Might take out Sackdoth's commander... The use of shields is making... There we go! Sackdoth's commander is down. The use of shields is making it rather unpredictable. Sackdoth can micromanage around those shields quite effectively. And Anarchid did indeed take out 
Sackdoth's commander. Sackdoth losing his commander at the five minute mark of the game. And this is where I'm a bit. This is where I meant about thugs being a matter of confidence because, yes, thugs are powerful units. However, they're slow. They're very slow units, and they depend a lot on shield synergy, which means you need. I believe their fire rate is dependent on their shield strength, which means you need to have a lot of them for them to be effective. And. Although, unlike felons, their shield strength doesn't get depleted as they fire. I don't believe. At any rate, their shields do get depleted in their combat, of course, because they're getting hit. That's still a big thing. With these shield units, you want to have the shield death ball. That's what you're going for. Domination, however, is going to make a huge change in this. Makes everything different, because now, at this point, that Domination can just take everything that Sackdoth has. Breaking the shield synergy, though admittedly, even then, he still has shields to begin with. Anyway, the reason I was saying thugs aren't the best idea, or didn't think they were, is because Sackdoth can't easily take care of this, or can't come around and just stop this. Bandits will, of course, be able to do that fairly effectively, and a felon coming in. So he's going to take advantage of the shield synergy, but he, like I said, needs a lot of shields for this. I wouldn't be surprised if convicts were built on mass to deal with this as well. Sackdoth does have the southwest side of the map, not convincingly, but he does have it for now. Ravager's coming in, the Dominatrix is going to be the real game changer in this one. Ravager leveler coming in, however, they are going to deal a lot of damage. The Ravager is taking a lot of fire from that laser turret, but doesn't matter this one. The laser turret able to be captured, and that deals with that. So, an Aspis coming in as well. That is... Not my phone, hope. I apologize, I thought I heard the phone ringing. Anyway, Aspis is being built. That will be a much bigger synergy unit. However, I still think a lot of convicts wouldn't be a terrible idea. For cost, let's see. Aspis, 550, Convicts, 140. And Convicts could repair and reclaim in the process, and of course take... So for a big push, big terrain claiming push, I think a mass of Convicts with this, a Synergy, would help. A lot. Thug Felon Synergy isn't bad, but... For the cost... I'd like to hear some comments on that. I'm not sure myself. I've never really seen it used. Anyway, the Aspis is up, and... Felon able to deal a fair amount of damage with the Thug's shields recharging it nicely. That's the whole point of having the the synergy here, is that the shields will, when touching each other, recharge each other. Though immediately when this Aspis comes in, it will start draining all the shield power from everything else, and it will take a little while for it to build up enough shield power for it to matter. Now, that being said, Anarchid does have more and more dominatrices. He's taking out the southwest side of the map, and he's moving in with the leveler and ravager that basically survived because of the Dominatrix, taking out everything else that's been built so far. And the Asp is now in place to help with this. There's a nice little ball of harm. Not quite death yet. It's not quite a death ball, but it is definitely a maiming ball. Call it that for now. It's a maim ball. And actually, you know what? No, it's, it's starting to become death. There's enough shield power that it is working, but one of the thugs has been taken over. The Dominatrix did not capture the Asp. That would have been the big prize. So admittedly, the shield power is quite low. I don't know how much it matters. And this thug is still being a bit of a... Th well, it was a thorn in the side, but when the Dominatrix dies, it loses all of its captured units. I'm a little bit surprised that Sactoth hasn't... Oh, there's the airplane plant. Okay, I will be surprised if he doesn't go for Stilettos anytime soon. Stilettos being the EMP bomber do wonders against shields. Much like ticks and Racketeers, sort of. And... Anything else with the MP. And, and Zeus's, that was the other one I was thinking of. Stilettos do wonderful against shields. So if he builds a stiletto, I will not be at all surprised. Ravager's coming in, however, to try to defend against the shields coming in already. More thugs, actually Thug and Outlaw coming around the south side to take back what Sactoth lost. Anarchid still has solid control over the northeast side of the map, and his commander is right there, really not doing anything. Ravager's Trying to do what they can against the thugs, but the thug shields are stopping them. And the felon recharging just enough to continue dealing a bit of damage. Not enough to actually deal any meaningful damage, but enough to kill a Ravager, so that's still quite good. But, like I said, not enough... There aren't enough units here. Not, just not enough numbers. Actually, I suppose for cost, thug would actually be a better idea than using convicts. That being said, a convict is thrown in the mix from the looks of it. Oh, no, it's not going to be nearby. It's reclaiming. It will help out a bit, but... Thugs probably would be the best option for cost. However, the thugs are all going down. The felon out of shield energy. Everything out of shield energy. This whole ball is drained. 
the convict doing what it can to help bring it up, and there is that stiletto I was talking about. Sackdoth has it selected and will be bringing it in. I think at this point it's almost a little bit too late, but it's going to stop everything anyway. Freezing that felon in his tracks, allowing other stuff to kill it, and really no more felons coming in yet. Not sure if Sackdoth is going to continue along with that. Looks like he's quite enjoying the thug. Thug outlaw combination, just sticking with that. Felon, however, able to recover in time, and another thug able to help it recharge, so that felon not dead. Anarchy did not follow... Sorry. Yes, Anarchy did not follow up that... I believe I said Sackdoth got the stiletto. This is not true. Anarchy has a stiletto. Using it again, and... Able to use it much more effectively. He has the units to follow up. That will take it out. There is... Well, there's not much more that can be done for Sackdoth's forces. Two seconds left. Actually, there could be two seconds left in the EMP. Outlaw coming back up into place, and this thug trying to block up what it can, but dying in the process. The felon trying to repair what it can, and thug outlaw damaging the main base quite a lot. Getting rid of everything here, and Anarchid stunning his own airplane plant. So this stiletto I don't think can recharge right now. And this thug also EMP'd for the same amount of time. Actually, the airplane plant will be un EMP'd slightly sooner. But it doesn't matter, Anarchid losing a ton of his economy, all of his energy economy going down, and a lot of his metal economy going down as well. Another light vehicle factory being built back of factory. He really likes the light vehicles. And this airplane factory won't be too threatened. The thug gone, the outlaw soon to be gone. Everything being slowed down though, but the outlaw taken over and is now Anarchid's. Sackdoth, however, in the meantime, did take a lot of map control, and that is important. Sackdoth Despite this, is behind an economy. He needs to rebuild a lot of metal extractors. He is doing so with a couple of them, but he needs to build many, many more. Getting a laser to get rid of Anarchid's metal extractors as well. But Anarchid has this northeast side of the map and has not been contested. It's not actually that well secured. These two metal extractors could go down to bandits, no problem. This one right here would take a bit more work, but still would go down fairly quickly. But that's not been approached. Interestingly. Vandals are set up to try to counter the Stiletto. I don't think it'll be enough in time. Stiletto coming around, not in position to attack, but as soon as an attack is started, the Stiletto should come around and stun it. At the same time, we see Anarchid just pushing along the center, actually trying to stop this harassment. He seems... he's fully aware of it happening. Fully aware of Sactoth going towards the base. Double-check Sactoth. He is not... he is aware of this laser turret. He's not aware of the rest of the expansion here, but he's probably suspecting it. He'd be wise to do so. Anarchid, on the other hand, has no radar. Anarchid has none. He only has line of sight for figuring out what's going on. And the laser turret able to get rid of the Scorcher and get rid of these metal extractors. So successful move by Sactoth there. The Stiletto not able to EMP anything. And the Felon doing a nice job with the synergies to get rid of this vehicle factor. The vehicle factor is going down before it builds anything at all. The Stiletto is able to stun everything. That was a bizarre stun pattern there. And it goes down, apparently exhausting itself in the process of stunning the entire world. It went down in a blaze of lightning. That made no sense. But sense aside, Anarchid able to defend against his attack, losing his light vehicle factor, but he still had one in his main base. So, small loss, still something. His commander's alive, however. Beam laser energy cell. So he's still pretty solid, and the Dominatrix are still alive, able to capture a lot of the... actually... Everything that wasn't killed is captured. But Band is going to the main base, very effectively harassing, getting rid of more wind generators and more metal extractors, trying to keep Anarchist's economy down. This is the most important thing in 0k. It doesn't matter how big of an economy you have, it matters how small of an economy your opponent has. Or rather, the difference in economy. If your opponent's economy is smaller, you're doing just as well. In fact, probably better, because you're actively harming them at the same time as you're pulling yourself ahead. Whereas if you just build up, then it's a matter of what, how well you can handle endgame. And that could come down to army and... Well, actually, admittedly. Army advantage could be nullified by overextending and harassment. Regardless, Anakin and Sactile seem to be fairly even for map control, and Anakin slightly less well defended up here. He actually hasn't rebuilt this metal extractor yet. He's behind an economy. 16 to 25. This is including reclaim. Though, admittedly, Anakin has a bit more reclaim potential. Sactile has hardly any reclaimables near any of his constructors, and... Yeah, he basically has no constructors. Other than this one here is... He has a bit of reclaimables right here. 
But the Dominatrix is coming in. Actually, Dominatrix is not coming in. It's just hanging back, letting the units do the fighting that it has controlled. Wise move there, unless bandits come in and take out the Dominatrix. In which case, the tides are turned very quickly for Anarchid. He'd lose a lot of his... He, half his army would be going right back to Sackdoth. And a bandit, light laser combination, doing nicely against the Ravagers. But the Scorcher able to take that out. Now, at this point, I... I gotta say... Anarchid is not... He is managing to harass fairly well. But neither player seems to be raiding a whole lot. I mean, neither player seems to have been going forward and taking out... I mean, Sackdoth, okay, yes, he has been raiding. That's true. Anarchid, however, not really. Anarchid's been mostly focused on these big pushes and trying to take over units. But... Admittedly, okay, it did work, ultimately. Partly because of the cap car, but mostly his own units. This tag over the southwest did work. Sackdoth probably isn't defending enough. Admittedly, with shield bots, that's hard to do. Shield bots are very focused around staying in one group and having that synergy of being all together. So spreading out is not a great strategy for them. However, bandits can do it. Anyway... Leveler and... Well, okay, Leveler and a controlled outlaw taking care of what Sackdoth has tried to expand in the northeast. Anarchid, once again, ahead in economy quite decisively, but this game has been going back and forth this entire time. I think Anarchid may be pushing ahead. I think this may be it, though. A felon trying to turn this around. Not doing the best job, over. Not enough support with the shields, but the Ravager still scared off. Not enough support for itself to keep going. I'm a bit surprised that... I'm a bit surprised Anarchid hasn't built... Either more Scorchers or more Levelers. Scorchers because they can just get in and deal a ton of damage nearby, and Levelers for those bandits that come in and seem to just be the the thorn in the side of Ravagers. They move fast enough. I mean, there have been Levelers coming in with the Ravagers, but I guess the big thing would just be more units, actually. You know what? That is a big surprise. Anarch is floating a lot of metal. Why is he not putting in a Caretaker? Constructors, take that out. He does have... He has stunned this. He is taking the Felon, or trying to dominate the Felon, but not quite able to do so. The Felon will die before it gets taken over. The Aspis will come back... Well, it doesn't even matter. The Aspis' shield is so big, it can't really protect itself too well. Anything can come anywhere nearby and take it out. But like I said, why is Anarchid not building... More? There's the Caretaker, finally. I'm just surprised that it's taken so long for that to be built. So he's had a massive metal advantage. There was a short time where he had a metal disadvantage. But he's had a massive metal advantage, like above 20 metal advantage. Or at least above 20 metal, and nothing huge to build for a while. I'm just surprised he hasn't gone for that to stop floating metal. And he is also building a light vehicle factory. So building two light vehicle factories, one with the help of a caretaker, the other one with a caretaker support. At this point, he would need 40 metal to support this. 30 metal will keep him going, but it will be at one and a half times speed total compared to one factory. Gunship plant up for Sackdoth. Hadn't actually done anything yet with it, but a rapier for some extra support. Not bad, but... Crashers, actually not in production. No crashers being built up quite yet. Anarchid needs to consider building those. He probably doesn't need them quite yet, but he will need them soon. More rapiers coming up. Once Sackdoth gets about a dozen of them, it's going to be very difficult for Anarchid to push forward. In fact, even with just two, it's becoming a bit of a thorn. With a dozen, and a dozen won't be coming too shortly. It looks like it's about 12 seconds per, so it's going to be a minute and a half, and that's going to be all the rapiers that Sackdoth needs. Possibly more so. I expect Crashers will be built up fairly soon. I expect... Oh, Avengers as well. That's another really good option. Though, admittedly, the problem with Avengers being that a Trident could be built up, and that would pretty much counter them in their tracks. The Rapier, however, doing a great job. The Ravager trying to take it out, but the Ravager shots too slow. The Leveler, however, can... can get some hits in. If there's enough of them grouped up, the Leveler, its shot moves fast enough, it can hit them. And Anarchid... His commander being slightly threatened, but the rapiers... Oh no, the Anarch... does he... he does have an energy shell, but he's not... Right, energy shells. He has a beam laser. Not attacking, however, Dominatrix, these are taken out. Well, taking care of one of the rapiers. And protecting the commander. The commander just barely not going down, but the Dominatrix is still going down. Or might go down. One of them goes down, bringing back a rapier to Sackdoth's side. However, he loses the other one, and his last rapier will be killed before it's taken back. More rapiers coming up, but Sackdoth went forward too quickly with those rapiers and lost all of them. More than lost all of them, really, and Razor's Kiss to keep this going. Is that one Dominatrix able to take care of two rapiers? I believe it was the same Dominatrix that was taking care of those shield boss before that were killed. And Avenger doing what it can to take out the rapiers, but not quite enough. You'll need quite a few more of those. 
In fact, the Avenger going down to the Rapiers themselves, I don't see that as a problem though. More Avengers coming in and pushing these Rapiers back. But still, Avengers are fairly frail. It's just a matter of their cost. They're, they're cheap. 150 metal each compared to 300 metal for Rapiers. So, 2 to 1 ratio. If they win at a 2 to 1 ratio, they're doing fine. And a Crasher, there we go, I was waiting for that one. Crasher coming in, we're from Anarchid. And Anarchid basically has this game in the bag, he just needs to do one big push. And that's exactly what he is doing. I really am surprised Sackdoth did not keep these Rapiers in his main base and just come out with a dozen of them. A couple bandits are being used to harass. Not bad, but I think it may be too late at this point. Sackdoth, his main problem is a military disadvantage, not an economic one. Defending as best he can, but it's hardly any military in his base. His main military is these two bandits harassing and getting killed. His rapiers doing what they can to harass the northwest, but or northeast rather. Harassing the northwest is no good because that's Sackdoth's own base. But Sackdoth, that being said, his own base is going down very quickly. I think he's going to throw in the towel any minute now. His harassment doing what it can, but the stiletto stopping it. it six seconds left, and it's going to go down. I should say, and the harassment will continue. Sackdoth. His bandit was not getting attacked there, but his main base is going down, and that will be game. Lost his gunship plant, losing a shield block factory. The leveler's just taking out everything in there, and the bandit also going down, being finished off. Right as the... probably by an Avenger, right as the EMP wears off, and Sackdoth surrenders! That is the game with the... the... Well, that's most bizarre. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and I... Do I have another match for tonight? No, I think I'll call it a night tonight. So hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everybody.